All right, so tonight we're going to talk about how to reload M1 Garand or 30 out 6 Springfield for the M1 Garand. Um, I'm going to try to make this quick. I made another video and I haven't edited it together yet. No, that, I wasn't really sure, so maybe we'll, we'll splice things together from that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your once fired M1 Garand casings. And what I like to do is uh, this is a 45 caliber uh, pistol. Um, styrofoam uh, pistol shell holder from a box of 45 um, and I take my uh, 30 out 6 Springfield and I drop them in here neck first because uh, I'm gonna lube these up and I don't want to get any lube on the shoulder or the neck um, it just helps prevent uh, cracks and uh, any sort of damage to the neck and the shoulder while you're resizing so I get them lubed up here pretty nice with this stuff, and what I do is, I just take a little bit, about that much, and with the case inside, I just uh, rub it off like that. Give it, give it a, give it a good old, uh, what you call it, a good finger job. So we've got. That done, and I've got about, I don't know, 20 something cases here. I've already done a lot. All I'm doing right now is prepping these to be sized because the next step after we deep cap them and resize them is gonna be to trim them down. So these are measuring in at uh, 2.484 inches uh, before uh, being resized and afterwards they're gonna measure right at about three inches. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the resize. And I'm using a Dillon RL 550 uh, with some Lee Classic uh, steel reloading dies for 30-06. Um, they fit in just fine if you take off the uh, the main nut that goes on there. Uh, that would normally load them onto a Lee uh, press. And we're just going to run it up through here. Now that's been decapped and resized. And we're going to check the length. length of this one after being resized is about 2.489 so uh, the spec the trim to spec for this is 2.484 so I want to get it down to 2.484 so that brings me to the next step which is over here to my Hornady cam lock trimmer now I won't go over how to get this thing set up um, that would be in another video, but suffice to say, it's set up to trim these down to 2.484 inches. Sometimes you need to get up here and just kind of dig in. All right. Didn't trim too much off of that. <clears throat> it might be out of calibration. We'll check it one more time. Interesting. It's uh, trimming a little bit. Okay, so got the uh, cam lock trimmer worked out. Um, now we got the cases trimming down to two point four eight five ish, which I'm I'm happy with. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. And the next step is going to be, if uh, especially if you're using military brass, is you're going to prep the primer pocket. Um, now I use this RCBS uh, multi-station. It's got uh, five stations on it. Um, it's got a, a deburring station, a chamfering station, and then it's got three stations that you can just sort of put whatever tool you want. Now for my purposes, I've got a primer pocket reamer, which uh, or swager, which uh, basically gets rid of the military crimp. We've got a primer pocket uniforming uh, tool, which uh, uniforms the depth of the primer pocket. And then I've got a primer pocket cleaner, which is essentially just a little metal brush, steel brush here. Um, and there's other types of cleaners, primer po po pocket cleaners. Um, Lyman makes a great uh, set of tools that have um, 
there's there's eight tools in here and they're all the same except one's made for larger calibers and, and one's for smaller uh, so for instance uh, the primer pocket cleaner looks like this instead of a steel brush it's a sort of look it looks like a small flathead screwdriver um, I actually prefer this over the one that I've got on the RCBS but I've got this one on there because um, there's an issue with threads on the RCBS uh, on that particular station so anyway uh, moving right along I'm gonna go ahead and swage slash ream this primer pocket here and the way I do it is I gotta kind of stand up get a good grip on this brass make sure that your hand is away from the case neck especially if you've just deburred and chamfered that case neck because chances are it's going to be a little bit sharp or at least have a, a pretty fine edge and I've got rings on my on my hand from where I've dug in there oh see it just happened so grab it ease it on there and just press firmly until you know that you've got that military crimp out of there. The last thing you want is to have a bunch of cases that you think uh, you got the crimp out on and you go to start uh, priming them and you find out that that crimp didn't come out properly. So once it's you've got about no resistance there and you can just sort of turn the case like that counterclock or yeah clockwise against the counterclockwise turning um uh swager or reamer then you know that your your crimp is gone now i put it in the uniforming tool this is essential um, i have had several cases where they weren't uniformed and i just couldn't seat the primer uh, they're not deep enough anyway, and the primer was sticking out. And we're going to clean that primer pocket a little bit, and just sort of wipe this off, and then there you have it, a finished primer pocket. Now this particular um, brass is from Poonsang Armory. This is a South Korean uh, surplus that I picked up uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, I got about 250 rounds for about $100, which was a hell of a deal. Um, and it is all shot great. I still have plenty of the factory loaded stuff, um, but I've got about a hundred of these that I need to, to load um, because I own a 1943 uh, M1 Garand that has all World War II parts, and I don't want to risk shooting any sort of commodity hunter, uh, hunter ammunition out of it, and I never would anyway. So I prefer just full metal jacket, clinking ammo coming out of that thing. Um, of course, I could load it with some... Uh, 180 grain uh, Hornady SSTs or ELDX, 200 grains, um, but uh, no particular reason to it this time. So right now I'm literally just loading it uh, so that I can have kind of restock on all these rounds that I've spent. So, all right, so here we go. We've got the casing that's ready to load. And for this, I'm using H335 Hogden, Hog Hodgden, Hodgden H335. And the reason being is that uh, for the reference table that I'm using, the H335 has the most uh, variability in, in load uh, or grain and speed. Uh, sorry, load grains and speed, powder weight and speed, bullet speed, sorry. I have more options. Uh, whereas if I was going with something like, um, we'll just. Uh, For instance, uh, I could use uh, some H4895, but that limits me to only two different loads uh, at either 43.2 or 44.8 grains, and that's at either 2400 or 2500 feet per second. With H335, I've got four different options from 2400 to 2500 to 2600 to 2700, uh, 2700 being 45.1, and um, with a hot load being at uh, 46.4 grains, 2750. So I could potentially go over 45.1. Um, it would be a, a considered a you know hot load, but whatever. Um, another good versatile powder for this is uh, 
uh, VIHTN135, which I do not have any of, and I haven't even seen anywhere at all whatsoever. Um, so, um, again, you can do, for this particular bullet, which is 147 grain, full metal jacket, uh, boat tail, um, your options, you know, aren't just going to be limited to what's here in the Hornady manual. Uh, I also have here, which I like to reference, the complete reloading manual for 30 out 6 Springfield. So this kind of has uh, references from just about, you know, it, has, uh, it says right here, Accurate, Alliant, Hodgdon, Hornady, IMR, and Osler, RCBS, Sierra, Spear, Winchester, and others. So that's a really good one to have. Um, I'm just using this one because it's an easy reference. Uh, it covers the, the bullet that I, that I need to load. Um, and uh, I've got the powder for it already. So we're gonna be loading exactly 45.1 grains um, and getting 2,700 feet per second performance out of these. Now I've already loaded these before and I've confirmed uh, that they do indeed. The load data for these um, is, is accurate which it isn't always from Hornady. Sometimes they're conservative with their load data and you can end up uh, um, loading what you think is gonna be, for instance, for nine millimeter, a 1200 feet per second uh, round. And instead you end up with a 950 feet per second round. Um, uh, I countered that with the bullseye powder, but that's neither here nor there and moving on. So we're ready to load this. What I like to do is uh, when I am, uh, I'll just kind of go back to when I'm decapping greased up um, shell casings, I like to put a cloth inside of my uh, bullet catch tray on my Dillon. This is a Dillon RL550 so that they don't, uh, so that the, the shells coming out of when I pull them back out of the decapping die, they're not um, picking up a bunch of grime and dirt. So I've already got a primer ready in here. We're not gonna index it. We're not gonna pull the ram all the way down. We're just gonna kind of lift it. Time you to get it in line and then prime it. Check it real quick. Move to station two. Get some powder in there. And we just dropped primer out. I've got a problem with my primer bar right now. And Dylan is sending me a new one, luckily. Okay, so we're way over the weight limit. And we're just gonna manually kind of drop a little bit out of here because I don't feel like messing with it right now. Too much. Let's see if we can get this. And I will see if I can move the camera and show you. This is a RCBS magnetically stabilized scale. So we're right at about 45.1. There's some air blowing on this thing. I mean, I'd say that's safe. We're we're maybe half a grain over. Um, so that looks right to me. That's not too bad. Just to be safe, though, just because it's a 43 M1 Garand and not a Thompson Center Compass 30 out six, we're gonna drop couple little granules out of here just to get it down to that weight just for my own peace of mind and boom we're right there we're zeroed at 45.1 grains okay Dump the powder back in we know we're good Put the pin back on, take our float tail, or FMJ float tail. I know it's kind of, I'll guide it up in there. All right, and we're seated perfectly halfway up the cantilever. And, oh, well, I don't know how I feel about that crimp. Let's see. Yeah, that's a good print. That's that felt pretty good. All right, now that's a completed round of uh, 30 out six Springfield for the M1 Grand. This should travel at about 2,700 feet per second. And we're gonna put it here. 
with the rest of the finished ones. So that's how we load one round. And now what about if we want to load a lot more rounds? So I talked about taking these and just decapping them, which is what I'm going to do right now. So while I was going over the video that I was going to publish earlier and I said, hey, you want to see how to reload a bunch of 30-06, uh, I realized I never even talked about how to do that or how I do it. So this is basically how I do it. I've got my Dillon RL550 here and I've got a Lee Challenger right here. What I do is, is after I've resized all my casings and prepped them and everything, I take the sizing die out and then I just start loading them, okay? That way I can prime each case without having to resize it again. So I separate my resizing. Sometimes I'll put my resizing die on this, but what I really like to do is put a different caliber on this. So right now I'm doing 30-30 uh, with the Lee, as you can see, and uh, I've got the seating die in here. Um, but if I have to, sometimes I'll just resize uh, first and then, and then um, do the other three uh, separately. The reason being is because what I've noticed is, is that if you resize on the Dillon while you're doing everything else, you'll have weird problems come across, like uh, you won't get a correct powder charge or the seating depth of your bullet won't be right. Um, I don't know if it's just my press or Dillon presses in general, but if you're resizing and decapping while you are um, also performing the other three operations of the press, uh, it, it usually typically doesn't work out that good. So anyway, I'm gonna cut back now to the original video, but that's how I do it. So Lee Challenger, separate out my, um, uh, my, my full length resizing from the rest of my processes and, and then bam, now I can do two different calibers. I can focus on this and uh, do 30-30 while I'm uh, loading the rest of my uh, five five six rounds. So there you have it. Now they're in my little burp cloth, and I can either pull these out and dry them with this, or what I like to do is I have got another piece of really good cotton here. My wife is a seamstress, and she provides me with lots of scrap cloth. And then from here, I take them and I dry them off. And I set them in my, uh, can't see it from here, but I set them in my um, ready to be, oh, look at that. The PPU doesn't have a military crimp on it. That's interesting. Um, anyway, I put them in here. So, uh, yeah, so I, I have, um, unprocessed brass then I lube it up and stick it on on this and then I uh, resize every piece I put it in here and then after it's resized I stick it in here and then this gets it ready to be sized and then deburred chamfered deburred again primer pocket or uh, primer crimp removed primer pocket uh, uniformed cleaned and then the case neck brushed and then at that point, we've got a, a ready cartridge. So that's how I do M1 Garand uh, or 30 out 6 Springfield. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. And uh, I hope you learned something from this. Um, if you didn't, well, then I just wasted 20 minutes of your time. Thanks for watching.